from Asgard. I would like to talk to you today about the flagship product of the Valhalla Labs line, Thor's Hammer. Now, I didn't name it Molnar because no one would doubt what the hell that was. What is Thor's Hammer? Thor's Hammer is what many say is the first only real natural test booster. That is, comes in two parts the Thor's Hammer product and the Todd Liam D test booster product. Now, the Thor's Hammer product has a number of ingredients, some of which inhibit the conversion of testosterone to estrogen. Because what's the point in filling a cup just to have the water leak out of the cup? This, the Todd Liam D test booster component of the product, has sodium diaspartate. Now, sodium diaspartate is like aspartic acid, it's just better. Almost all the studies that showed that diaspartic acid worked at boosting natural testosterone levels were actually done with sodium diaspartate. So if you've heard that there's inconclusive evidence or mixed results, it's because they use, some studies use diaspartic acid, some studies used sodium diaspartate. So the correct product is sodium diaspartate, and because it's rarer, it's 10 times more expensive. So like anything at ValhallaLabs.com, I spend, I spare no expense at providing you the greatest products at Midgard or beyond. Now, I also included vitamin D because double-blind clinical studies on humans have shown that is very important for having transport of the cholesterol into the Leydig cells where testosterone is produced. So if you're deficient in vitamin D, you will make less testosterone. That I found that 2,000 units is what you need to get the best return, and that's what I use. That's, in the studies I saw, using more than 2,000 units did not improve testosterone production. So there's 2,000 units of vitamin D3 and the clinically used amount of diaspartic acid in the sodium diaspartic version. Now that's to boost natural tests. Now the ingredients in the Thor's Hammer product are a little bit more complicated. Calcium lactate has also been shown to boost natural testosterone levels. Agnosine sulfate has been used to increase blood flow to the testes by way of nitric oxide synthase. So if you watch the Fenner's Fury video, you'll realize, wait a minute, that's in both products. That's because there's multiple times a day you should take agmatine sulfate. And when I say you should take the entire Valhalla Labs line for the maximum effect, that's why. Sometimes I have to split a product up in multiple, I'm going to split an ingredient up in multiple products for you to get it as many times a day as you actually need it. Um, L-carnitine, L-tartate. Well, in the Thor's Hammer product, it was included because it increases androgen receptor. What's the point of making all this testosterone if it has nowhere to bind to? Then it just gets converted to estrogen. So you want to have an increase in androgen receptor. There's no point in making a thousand keys if you only have a hundred locks. There should always be more locks than keys um, so that there's maximum binding. Because binding efficacy is what really is involved in DNA transcription, RNA translation, and protein synthesis, which is the point of this, is to ultimately grow muscle, correct? Kudzu has been proven to increase growth hormone in rats, not in humans, but it doesn't really matter. It's the same. It's the ghrelin receptor. The ghrelin receptor is spelled G-H-R because it's growth hormone releasing. Ghrelin is an acronym for growth hormone releasing. So the GHRP receptor is the ghrelin receptor. So it's an herbal GHRP. That's what Kudzu is. A remistane is a competitive steroidal inhibitor of the aromatase enzyme. So aromatase is the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen. Aroma, a, kind of like a, the lock and key man, an analogy, it's like taking a key covered in glue and sticking it in that lock so that the aromatase enzyme can't go forth and convert your precious testosterone into some garbage like estrogen, which just basically shuts off your brain's ability to make testosterone. It's horrid. It's like a brake pedal squared to your progress. Nothing is worse for a man and un than having any estrogen, except for a very minimal amount. A minimal amount is all you need for proper HDL health. Anything more than that just impedes your progress in the gym. Now, there's also 
resveratrol, which is, or is pronounced resveratrol. I always had a problem with that word. That it's basically there for health reasons. It's also supposed to inhibit the estrogen receptor. So that if a little bit of estrogen does get made, it doesn't bind to all the wrong places. The only place you want the estrogen to bind is to your liver to make HDL. And HDL is the good cholesterol. That's why I mentioned it. And 7-8-benzo. 7-8-benzo is a suicide inhibitor on aromatase enzyme. So there's two aromatase inhibitors. One destroys aromatase enzyme. 50% of them are destroyed completely. The other 50% of them are bound. So you get about 25% active aromatization. So about a quarter or a third of your estrogen. And all the clinical studies that have been done, uh, let me rephrase it, on all the anecdotal evidence and all the people that have submitted their blood work, when they were on and when they weren't, and when they went back on, it always is a threefold change. So that using Thor's hammer from what I've seen from anecdotal evidence from multiple blood works of multiple customers over years is that your estrogen goes down to about a third. So it doesn't get shut off completely. You still have enough to make HDL, but it doesn't get in the way of your testosterone synthesis. Um, testosterone levels usually go up. If someone's really, really low, like 100, 150, they tend to go up to 250. But if they get 400, they go up to 800. If they're 700, they go up to 800. So usually we get a doubling effect up into the point where they're at about 800. Then the body fights hard to convert that over. So Thor's hammer is great at getting you past the threshold of where you'll get erections. And it'll take you all the way past the threshold for building muscle in healthy people. But it never takes you so far into testosterone zone or so low into estrogen zone to where there's going to be any health problems. It's really magical how well it worked out. That I don't want to say that you'll be the god of strength if you use it, but you'll definitely be taking a step in the right direction. So to get your Thor's hammer, go to Valhalla-Labs.com. And if you're wondering what this is, the reason why you should trust me over the next guy who's anonymous is I'm a champion bodybuilder. That's where those axes come from. I'm a biochemist. That's where the unit of degree is from. And I'm also a medical doctor. So surgery, cancer removal, delivering babies, all that shit. Not a fake doctor, not like a lot of these other supplements, just take someone who's got a degree in how to test cardio people or how to put people on a treadmill and measure their heart rate and compare one piece of cardio equipment to another, but an actual doctor and a scientist who specialized in the creation of products to alter the physical form. So double down on that. Also, I had a master's in neuropsychopharmacology, which is basically how mind-affecting drugs change the body and how changing your body can affect your mind, that type of stuff. So when it comes to emotional or mental health that comes from a fitness lifestyle, getting a healthy blood chemistry in your body helps your mind. I mean, it's common sense. The brain's an organ. So if this is a toxic waste pool, you're sticking your brain in a toxic waste bath, you're going to feel emotionally worse than if you have a healthy environment for your brain to percolate in. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this diatribe. I know I did. Go to Valhalla-Labs.com.